First John chapter two, verse 15, do not love the world or anything in the world, straight up. We're going through the book of John. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life comes not from the Father God, but from the world. Okay, what comes from the world? The lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Now, these are three temptations the devil threw at Jesus, Luke chapter four. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So let's go through this. Number one, the lust of the flesh. Wanting to gratify our body's desires. Okay, so a lot of people think this has to do with sexual sins and stuff like this. Be truthful with you, the lust of the flesh for me is food. I mean, the fact is this, that the sin that I commit in this area is I see food and I like food and I like to eat and I eat too much and it's not healthy for me. Lust of flesh. Now, some people think it's only sexual desire, and that's absolutely ridiculous. Everybody can have the temptation of the lust of flesh, and it's according to what the devil can try to nail you on. And then we go to the lust of the eye, the sinful desire or desires to possess what we see or to have those things which have visual appeal. And, and, and there again, it, it's different things. Illustration, for some of us, we go in debt for the dumbest things because we just want it. We have to, I can't, if I don't get it, I can't live. And it's like, you know, like, are you serious? Uh, I know a pastor, his wife has a shoe fetish. And she's always on Facebook showing everybody her shoe. Now, when she dies, people at her funeral are going to talk about her shoe. Can you imagine? Uh, hello. Okay, we won't go there. Okay, and then the pride of life. A state of pride or arrogance, but with the implication of lack of basic for such an attitude. False arrogance, pretentious pride, boastful haughtiness. Okay, so... What we look at is three things, wanting to gratify sinful desires to possess an arrogance, pride, and so forth. What, what happens is this. We need to draw a, a difference between temptation and sin. And when I was younger, uh, I, I never had this. The pa I always thought I was going to hell because the pastor never told me the difference between temptation and sin. Let me give you an illustration. Jesus was tempted he never sinned. Now, when the devil tempted him in Luke chapter four with, with all three of these, you know, the flesh, the, the eyes, and, and the life, the point is this, he was tempted, but he did not sin. And, and I did not know this because see, when a temptation came into my head, I thought I was sinning, therefore I always thought I was going to hell. I mean, I just like, it didn't matter how many times I got saved in the day, I always thought I, and, and nobody sat me down and said, let me teach you about temptation versus sin. First, uh, James chapter one. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempted me. That's the first lesson you need to know. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after the desires have conceived, watch this, after the desires have conceived, in other words, you're tempted, but what do you do with your desires? If you get rid of them, you flee temptation, that's great, but if you ponder them or you live with them, then it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death, death is hell. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, and Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. How? Deliver us from the evil one. Who is the evil one is tempting you? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful when he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So somebody says to me, oh, I can't take any more. No, the point is this, God knows how much you can bear. And watch this, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way so that you can endure it. So somebody says to me, oh, no, I can't, no, baby. And you know, the point is this, he has a way for you to get out. What you need to do is seek him to find it out. I end with this, Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
So here, here's the thing you need to learn. Jesus was tempted, but he did not sin. God does not tempt, but God does let you be tempted. Job, when the devil comes to Job, says, I, I, comes to God, says, I want to tempt Job. And God says, yeah, I give you permission, but you can't take his life. You can tempt him right up until then. The point is this, God doesn't tempt you, but here's the key. What do you do with temptation? The Bible says flee. The Bible says flee. I've told this illustration of a friend going to work. He's on his way to work. He looks at this big advertising billboard. It's very tempting. Next day, he goes in different ways so he doesn't see the billboard, so he doesn't enter into lust. Okay? It's what you do with it. Now, let me talk to you about this. God in 1 John teaches us through the book of uh, writer John, we are not supposed to be in the world. We're not supposed to have the flesh and the eye and pride and all this stuff, okay? And, and, and the crazy thing is trying to figure out, is this the lust of the eye or pride of life? Or, who cares? It's sin. Okay, that's the issue. But let me take you to number one. We need to get real. Not only real with ourselves, but real with God, real with those around us. I mean, when the Bible says confess your sins, other, also sit down and talk to people. Like I talk to my friend, I talk to my wife about things that are tempting me. I mean, when, you, when you're getting real, what you're doing is coming clean and you're saying, listen, I'm trying to be honest, I'm trying to humble myself, and also I am trying to get heaven. Now watch this under real, heaven. Jesus says in the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven doesn't have temptation, heaven doesn't have sin. So what we need to do is get real and ask for heaven to come down on me. Now, watch this. Point number one is get real, but point number two and point number three are very similar but different. Okay, watch this. Point number two is get right. Point number three is get righteous. Now, let me share with you point number two before we go to point number three. Watch this. Getting right is when I take the first step in God to get right, gain the world out of me. Gain the world out of me, gain temptation, fleeing. The point is this, God wants to help deliver me, but I need to take the first step, get right. Now, when I get right, what I do is I call on the Holy Spirit to help me, I call on people in the church to help me, friends to help me, but it really is up to myself to take the first step. See, nobody can, I can help you stay away from temptation, but I still can't guard your mind. You need to take that step. When you start to get real and get right, then all of a sudden God shows up with this incredible righteousness. What is righteousness? Doing right in the eyes of God, doing his will. Remember First John? Not being in yourself, but being in the will of God. And when you're in the will of God, you'll live with him, Father God, for eternity. The point is this. Jesus says that we need to seek you first in the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6. Here's the whole point. His righteousness, when we are getting real and getting right, what we're doing is we're going after God to help us. Lord's Prayer. Deliver us from temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Here's the point. God wants to help you get rid of Remember, I just read the scripture, he makes a way out for us of temptation. God wants to empower you. God wants to help you. But you first have to get right and get real. And then when you do those two, all of a sudden you get righteousness. And righteousness is from God. And I love this part of it. Okay, so how do I get righteous? I get into the Word. I pray. I, I start seeking His face. Now, what, what happens is this. What will, what will people see in you when you do this, when you get real, when you get right, and you get righteous? Instead of the world, what they're going to see is what the world would call, now watch this, what the world will call crazy faith. Your faith in Christ I mean, you, you, where, where, you know, the world will say, oh, you need this part of the world in order to be really great. And you no, know, the Bible teaches me, and you put your faith in Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and right. Christ alone, he's my solid rock. And, and crazy faith. 
I, I love this because the fact is, is how many times have I had somebody who's a non-believer say to me, man, you got crazy faith. And you know what? It's not crazy faith. It's biblical faith. But to the world, it's crazy faith because the Bible says our faith is foolishness to the world. Number two, I love this, where we not only have crazy faith, but we have concrete commitment. And a few years ago, I'm pouring cement with some friends, and we're, we're making a pad for something. I forget what it was. And, and as we're making this pad, I mean, it's all liquid and goo, and you can, you know, move it around. Half a day later, we come back, and you could stand on part of it because it was, and then the next day, you could build something on it. It's so solid. Here, here's the crazy, when was the last time your crazy faith led you to concrete commitment in Christ? where it didn't matter how much temptations came at me, how much hell came at me. My, you know what? I don't care if the whole world leaves me and mocks me. I'm going to be committed to God and his will through the Bible. Crazy faith. Concrete commitment. I leave this with you. When you have this crazy faith in God, I love this. When you have this crazy faith in God and you have this concrete commitment in God, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will give you contagious caring caring not only for God, but caring for others and caring for yourself. You won't want to go in the world because you care so much for God. You won't want to go in the world because caring for others, you don't want to hurt them with a bad testimony. You won't, you're caring in such a way, it's so contagious, other people will want it. I mean, people will mock you. They'll go, oh, you're such a religious freak. No, I'm not a relational freak with Jesus. When I got married, I gave up wanting to date anybody else, although there wasn't a lot of people to date, and all this stuff. But the point is this, I went with my wife. And when you go with Christ, you give up the world. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a car. and doesn't mean you can't have nice clothes, stuff like this. But when, when you're known on Facebook for your shoes instead of your testimony, you need to wake up. Let me take you this illustration. I used it before, but it's, it's very applicable to this. My wife and I, a number of years ago, we're in New York City. We, this is before we had children. We didn't have a lot of money, but we wanted to see New York. So we went to New York, and, and they had tickets for half price to see this uh, theater show, Singing in the Rain. I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing, you know. And I, well, as we're walking down Times Square, some guy comes up to me and says, hey, you want to buy a watch? I have a Rolex watch. I did not know what a Rolex watch was, but it was a big watch, and, I th and he goes, $75. And I go, I'm not paying $75. And so I talked him down to $25, and my wife gave him 25 bucks. So I'm in the theater that night, and watch this. I'm sitting in the theater, and it's so funny. I'm, I'm bored out of my brains halfway through Singing in the Rain, and of course, my wife, she's loving every part of it. And I'm reading this little magazine they give you about Singing in the Rain, and there's an advertisement about Rolex watches. And, and all of a sudden, I see the price of this Rolex watch, and I look at my Rolex watch, and it's, it's like, and I paid 25, and this is thousands and thousands of dollars. And I, I, halfway through, I turn to her and go, I got a stolen watch, I got a stolen watch, I got a stolen watch. And she looks, she goes, shh, don't tell anybody, we'll get arrested like this. And so we went out and then we flew back to Toronto a couple of days later and I went to a jewelry here in, in town. And when I went into the jeweler, I said to the sales lady behind counter, I still remember this, I said to the lady, hey, look at this Rolex watch. And she says, who gave it? And I said, my wife gave it to me because I didn't want to go to jail, let her go. And so what happened, I'm joking. And so what happened is she, uh, the lady behind counter is beautiful Rolex. This is how much it costs, brand new here in our store. And I'm looking, and I said, "Is it a fake?" No, it's not. How? Why would you think? And all of a sudden, the repairman's coming behind the counter, and I looked at him and said, "Sir, your repairman." Yeah, look at this. Is this a fake? And in half a second, he looked at it and said, "Yeah, it's a fake." And sales lady says, "No, it's not." And he said, "Yes, it is." I said, "Could you tell me how it's a fake?" Watch this. He said, "The second hand." See. Rolex, when the second hand's going around, it goes smooth, whereas this one was jerking around. You and I, we might look real to other believers. 
we might even look real to our family. But it's time to get real. Are you real? And God knows. The Bible says in the last days, there'll be people who stand before God saying, I, I cast out demon, I, and Jesus said, I'm sorry, I never knew you. Why? Because foot is in the world. See, here, here's the thing. Are you real? If you're real, then you'll have this incredible, crazy faith. And, and the second one is this. You need to get right. And when you get right, you get his righteousness. When you get his righteousness, you'll get this incredible concrete commitment from the Holy Spirit where it doesn't matter what the world throws at me, I'm going to stand for Jesus. It doesn't matter how, if people don't like me, I lose my job. It doesn't matter peer pressure. It doesn't matter if special interest group, I am going to stand for Jesus Christ. My hope is built. Let me take you to the last one. When you get this incredible righteousness, you get the love of Jesus and you get this contagious caring, watch, three ways, for God, for others, and for yourself. Now, this contagious caring, people will see Jesus in it. They'll know it's not you, but they'll know it's Jesus. Are you fake? To the average eye, you look real. Or are you real to the eyes of God? Let, let me just read this to you, and it's just so powerful. I, I, I just love this, where, where it says this. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. You know that, that sin that's going to rob you of heaven and God for eternity? It passes away. But whoever does the will of God, biblical will, not what you think the will of God is, but the biblical will, lives forever. Here's my problem I face. And I say this in love. There's some of us, we, it's, we've, we're, we're too far into sin to get real. I mean, can you imagine? We, our family thinks we're a Christian, and, and, and our family thinks we're serving God and all this stuff. And you know right well if you died right now, you wouldn't get into heaven. Get real. Get right. Get righteous. Through the Holy Spirit, get this crazy faith that only God can give you. Through the Holy Spirit, get this commitment that's so strong it's like concrete. Through the Holy Spirit, get the love of God flowing through you so you have this contagious caring, not only for Father God, but for people and yourself. I am begging you, whether you're a non-believer or you're a you think you're a believer, but you're not sure to get right with God today. Get right with God today. Why? Because it's eternal. It's eternal. It's eternal. I want to pray for you right now. And would you just repeat this prayer at home? Whether you are, are a believer or not believer, just repeat this prayer with me. Father God, Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Holy Spirit, show me, show me what I need to get out. And through your word, show me what I need to take in. Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me to get real with you. Help me to get right. And please help me to get your righteousness through the Holy Spirit. I commit myself to you. Give me your crazy faith. Give me your concrete commitment. 
And as the Holy Spirit touches me, may I have this contagious caring, not only for you, Father, but for others and for myself. So touch me now. In Jesus' name, amen.